Bethlehem. My fellow seniors, proud parents, and overzealous high school juniors watching the live stream, <laughs> welcome to class day. Now, of course, it's an honor to be here with Rashida Jones. Rashida, I'm a huge fan. No one is better at playing the friends of funny people than you are. <laughs> we are about to graduate from what is, according to dozens of publications and Chinese grandmothers everywhere, the best school in the world. Yeah. Now, many of us here, myself included, never even dreamed that we would get in, even though I think my good friend Todd Lowell Annenberg IV had a pretty good idea. <laughs> now, we're here today to talk about the future. Now, the future is one of those words that terrifies Harvard students, like B plus or Xbox 10. <laughs> what are we going to do next? Like most government concentrators, I am brilliant. <laughs> and I've already figured out this what to do with my future question. And like a government student taking a take-home final, I'm going to share my answers with you today. <laughs> Unlike the coat checkers at Freshman Formal, ladies and gentlemen, I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I am going to do something that no Harvard student has done before, and I'm about to make pretty big news announcing it today. Ladies and gentlemen, I, Aaron Hendricks, am going to colonize the nearby planet of Mars. Mother, father, contain your pride. <laughs> That's right, everyone. Although it seems like Harvard students have done everything humanly possible, no Harvard student has gone to Mars yet. And before you say it, I have reviewed the tapes. Matt Damon's trip was staged. <laughs> and I really can do this. My GoFundMe already has $20. <laughs> Only $7 billion to go. Now, donations of $5 will get you a postcard from Mars. Donations over 100 million will get you a postcard and a keychain. <laughs> I am going to be the very first human being to step foot on Mars. And right now, I want to convince all of you, the class of 2016, to come with me on my galactic journey. In this sense, think of this speech as one final recruiting session, <laughs> except everyone gets a job. Of course, for the record, I will be Neil Armstrong and the rest of you Buzz Aldrin losers, but still imagine it. Hundreds of thousands of miles away, Mars awaits. More fun, more free, more tan. The place of our dreams. Think Stanford, but a planet. <laughs> now, I know what many of you in the audience are thinking right now. I already have plans. This doesn't fit on my resume. I can't find my grandson. <laughs> and sure, many of us are already wildly successful. Some of you have made scientific breakthroughs in labs. Others have performed across the globe. Well, just yesterday, I got through one of those try not to laugh or smile YouTube videos without laughing or smiling. But even the Rhodes Scholars among us will have to eventually take off their robes, remove their powdered wigs, and ask themselves, could I have done something truly extraordinary? Trust me when I say this, exploring a new planet is a more extraordinary idea than whatever you have planned. We'll be entering a totally new and bizarre world, disrupting the past and inspiring countless generations to come. It's like we're new girl members of the SPI. <laughs> now, for those of you who might not know what the SPI is, it's a former single-sex, gender-exclusive social space that's now a gender-inclusive, exclusive social space. <laughs> Not to be confused with the current gender-exclusive, social-exclusive spaces. Those are the bad ones. <laughs> now,
while you're up here. I have one question, Dean Karana. Do these sanctions apply to my bedroom? Because it's been single sex exclusive for four years now. I find myself digressing. We as a class need to go to Mars because going somewhere new is what life is all about. Even though Mars won't be that different from the Harvard we know and love. Mars has no oxygen. Harvard has no hot breakfast on weekdays. <laughs> At Harvard, you have blockmates, while on Mars, you will have podmates. Or in my case, they will say they'll be your podmates and then kick you out last minute through a series of Snapchats. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no geotag for rock bottom. <laughs> Obviously, like Harvard, the new Mars colony will also be exclusive. <laughs> there will be places you won't be allowed to go, not because which white boys say you can't, but because the radiation will kill you. <laughs> Experts tell us that at first we'll live in cold, rocky tunnels underneath the Martian surface. But to that I say, it can't be worse than Winthrop. <laughs> oh, 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 but they're renovating it. No, Harvard, you are putting lipstick on a pig. Dean Karana, tear <laughs> down that house! <laughs> the intense trials and tribulations of Harvard classes and activities have prepared us for anything, even a hostile planet. For divest Harvard, Mars is perfect for you. No fossils to fuel. <laughs> Even though with temperatures in the negative 100 degrees, even you may wish it was getting warmer. <laughs> now, pre-law students, you'll be able to write up rules on a new planet that ensure religious liberty so that CS50 TFs can still worship their god king, David Malin. <laughs> Print F, bless his name. <laughs> For students who may want to perform a black mass, well, besides the Kong, the red planet may be the last desolate wasteland willing to host you. <laughs> and finally, for the famous Quidditch team, since there's reduced gravity on Mars, your insane delusions of flight will be slightly less disturbing. <laughs> it's going to be hard. But given time, and if we pool our diverse resources, I know that we can master life on Mars. Or better yet, we can faculty dean it. Now, I know that some of you regrettably may not join me, and that's okay. It's not the first time I've been told no. Just ask the Lowell Dining Hall card swiper. <laughs> but let's face it, it's okay if you don't come with me. Just because you don't have a $2 billion spaceship and enough dried food to last a lifetime, which I will have one day, doesn't mean you're not stepping out into the unknown. For me, I'm going to Mars because I love exploring and because Goldman wouldn't hire me. <laughs> but we'll all be crash landing into something completely new tomorrow morning. We will miss our friends dearly. We will hate our own cooking. And we will, from time to time, wish desperately that we could take a rocket back to the comforts of Harvard. I am here to tell you today that that is OK. No one in the history of the world has discovered anything about their surroundings or themselves without missing the past or fearing what's to come. Except maybe Yo-Yo Ma. That guy really got it. <laughs> but thanks to the last four years here and to each other, I know that we are ready for what's next. So to the class of 2016, good luck. Whether you're heading to a new job, a new city, or a new planet, I know that the future doesn't have to be scary. In fact, it's going to be fantastic. Our cars will fly higher than our inflated GPAs. Harvard's endowment will be bigger than our expanding sun, and its acceptance rate will be smaller than the polar ice caps. Unlike Matt Damon, 
we will actually go to Mars. And unlike Matt Damon, tomorrow morning, we will actually graduate from Harvard College. Thank you so much.